appreciate his presence, bringing joy to our hearts in the midst of all the things that we're going through. And uh, as a nation and as the nations of the world, there's a lot taking place and we are certainly to be grateful to the Lord for being able to come together uh, in peace. I was just looking at the uh, reports all week long of uh, the hurricane. And there's a lot of people that cannot um, appreciate today, last week, some devastation took place. Yeah. And many lives were lost, and we don't know if there'll be more. According to the newsmen, there are probably more. And uh, But we're living in those times that the Lord talked about, the last days. And um, I was thinking about, I was listening to the broadcast on last weekend. A couple of things that were said just kind of got my attention. We've got to keep focus in the midst of all that we're going through. And don't maximize our problem and minimize what God has done. God has done a lot for us. He saved us. Sometimes things get really some, sometimes things get really distorted when you're going through your immediate trials. You really just get twisted. You know, you forgot you were saved, you forgot that that God shed his blood and that gets real small and the immediate problem gets so big and so I believe God wants us to always keep the right perspective whenever we're going through and for, for really profound but yet simple reasons. God is good and he's full of mercy and compassion. And he, the, uh, I was saying on last week, he hasn't dealt with us after our sins. He's been merciful. So we want to always keep that in mind, and keep that with that in mind, we're going to go again. Again, he uh, directed me to go again to being grateful. So, uh, amen. I'm going to turn your attention to the book of Colossians again, chapter 2. And I'm, I'm not here to put a damper on your joy. <laughs> But I want you, after you have rejoiced and leave this place, to be able to continue. <laughs> you have something to rejoice about all week long. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is good. Colossians chapter 2. When you found it, please stand with me. We're going to read the very first seven verses, reading responsibly, beginning at verse one. <clears throat> for I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. And you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Together, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Amen. Father, thank you for the word of God. We thank you for your presence. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. And we ask now, Lord God, that you will illuminate the things that you say to us today, that we may grasp, Lord, the truths and understand in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Being grateful. Being grateful is a time that that word can mean a lot to us being grateful. 
Um, there's always somebody that want to be, that would love to be in your stead. So we must always keep that focus, that perspective in life to be grateful. Grateful. This is what the Lord gave. And grateful, two simple words, keep in mind, appreciation and thankfulness. Appreciation and thankfulness. When appreciation and thankfulness invade our lives, then our whole life will reflect it. Gratitude, right? So um, this is what the Lord is saying to us for now. Gratitude. Grateful, appreciation, thankfulness. And we, uh, just by way of review, why it was important, we came from Psalm 100 on last week, which said, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing, enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Be thankful to him. And bless his name. So the object of our worship, the object of our right attitude is who? God, right? Be thankful to him and bless his name. Uh, as I was <clears throat> listening to the broadcast this morning, it just was kind of great because <clears throat> I was thinking, yeah, how we, we can kind of maximize uh, and minimize. But we maximize the wrong thing. And we minimize the wrong thing. Isn't that something? Yeah, and that's when things get really twisted. And that's when instability will come. Okay, all right. Just want you to keep it in mind. So we, 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 we reflected on gratitude, being appreciative. That, in, that means in everything, in every situation. All right, why is it important? We talked about four aspects, or five, four things, why it was important. One, because of God's mercy. Now, it's very important to understand that God doesn't owe us anything. Ingratitude makes us feel like God owes us something. But God doesn't owe us anything. As a matter of fact, God has gone beyond himself to save us. Somebody said, I don't know, but guess what the Bible says? While we were yet sinners, when we were aliens, enemies of God, when our backs were turned on him, when we had no mind, no desire to come to him, when there was nothing in it for him except the joy and the grace and the love that exuded from his life, he died for us. He hung there on the cross as a criminal. Stakes were driven in his hands and his feet. A crown of thorns was pressed upon his head and he bled to death for us. Does he love us or what? I remember in some of my deepest trials, I would question his love. But I got distorted, twisted in my thinking. Look at somebody said, please don't get twisted in your thinking. Yeah. It's important to be grateful because of his mercy. Because of his mercy. Then he added another one. He said, it's important because... It's pleasant. 
If you find an individual that's ungrateful, they are unpleasant to be around for a long time. But a person that is grateful, they are favorable. There's a pleasantness around them. If people like to be around you, then you might have some pleasantness about you. But if people don't want to be around you, well, <clears throat> so he says it's pleasant. It makes a person pleasant to be grateful. And then he says it brings his favor. It brings his favor when a person is pleasant. Look at Israel in the wilderness. They wandered about for 40 years. They murmured and complained at every junction. And finally, God just destroyed them. He said, Moses, I'll get another group. Leave me alone, Moses. Don't intercede no more for me. So it will bring favor when, we're, uh, when we have a right attitude, an attitude of gratitude. Lord, I thank you for life. I didn't have to get up out of the bed, but you strengthened me. You gave me life. The old people would say the use and activity of our limbs, articulation of speech. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's what they remember, how we must not take the goodness of God for granted. We enjoy, as my wife said, we come and enjoy this presence. Someone dare not complain about the church. Look what God is doing. Look at this mercy that he allow us Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, not because we're good, because of God's mercy. I've had people to go to other churches and I'm not boasting but trying to make a point. He says, wow, something's missing you. I sat there and I heard the word, everything was good. But something was missing, it, that, that life. Yeah. It wasn't there, that vitality, that, that anointing. Yeah. So we must be grateful, isn't that right? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But it's important because of mercy. It's important because it makes us pleasant to people to be with. And it gives favor, he said. The third thing was gives favor. And the last thing he said, it stabilizes a person. If a person is ungrateful and it shows in the attitude, right? A person can be working on a job, they're ungrateful, they don't like the boss. They don't like the worker, co-worker, they don't like the supervisor. And so they're just frustrated. They come home, they complain, they complain, and so on. And sooner or later, guess what? They're going to look for another job or they're going to either be fired. <laughs> Uh, and you can go on, uh, you know, uh, and, and think what um, ingratitude will bring you in the long run. It doesn't work. It's not worth it. So let's go on. That's a, I'm still uh, just reviewing. Then we talked about hindrances to being ungrateful or uh, hindrances to uh, gratitude is ignorance, God says. Ignorance in the heart or understanding, the lack of understanding. Uh, you know, and there's some basic things when it comes to understanding uh, the nature of God and who, uh, who we have to depend on. There's some basic things that we must understand. We need God. We need God. We cannot survive without him. Uh, and so uh, that's an understanding. And, and God, uh, he, he causes us to live. He's a good God. He's a gracious God. And because of that, we want to continue to uh, uh, offer up a sacrifice of praise continually that is the fruit of lips giving thanks to his name. Isn't that right? God is gracious and God is plenty of mercy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
All right, so, um, but today's text, look again in Colossians 2, 4. I would that you knew what great conflict, what great agonizing and struggling, caring concern I have for you and for them at Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. Now, Paul hadn't seen these. <coughs> that their hearts might be comforted. Get that now that their hearts might be comforted. Comfort to the heart because of an understanding, all right? Being knit together in love. Now, when we get baptized into Christ, we're baptized into his love, right? Love is that jail, love is that, 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 that uh, 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 adhesion or the, uh, the glue that keeps us together, that unifies us. And, and, and he said, and, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding. See, understanding, look at somebody say understanding. understanding. To the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. Get this number, verse three. In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Wow. Anybody like wisdom, let him ask of God that gives freely and doesn't upbraid us go. All right. Verse 4 says, and I say this, and this I say, lest any man should beguile you through enticing words. Now, remember the uh, Colossians here, they were uh, uh, being challenged by a group called the Gnostics. Gnostics. And uh, they had a certain religion that they were uh, pushing and that uh, caused a certain group to feel elite. Uh, everybody can't get this. Every, in other words, there's a special knowledge. And so they isolated the common people, you know, and they perpetrated that, and Paul had to straighten out that wrong doctrine that brought hope to, uh, to some and, and, and discouragement to many. And so he was dealing with that. So then he, but in his laying down the foundation, and I love this because uh, if you want to know about Jesus Christ, you need to study Colossians. If you want to know more about the head, you need to study Colossians. Are you with me? Christ is the head, all right? Now look, at, look, look around just for a minute. Look around for a minute. Everybody got heads. You, you don't want to imagine somebody without, without a head in here, right? But the head, all the brain, the function, the intellect, the, the signal that gives, or, or that which gives signal directions to the body comes from the head. And you got to get this concept now because this is what Paul was saying. Christ being the head. Everything must come from him. The body cannot function. I, I'm, I'm reminded in the, in, in the, uh, uh, on the farm years ago when uh, uh, my, my parents used to take a chicken and lay his head on a block and they would chop it off with an, an axe. And I know it's gross, but that, I just, I'm trying to make a point. And the chicken would jump all around and they live for a few seconds because the head was gone. Are, are you with me? All right, I don't want to gross anybody out. I just want to. But the head, I'm, I'm making a point concerning the head. Christ is the head. Now this is going to help us in our relationship to him. Right? It's building a relationship with him, with Christ. Are you with me? All right, now we're going to talk a little bit more about that as we go on here, but I want you to follow me here. So now, <clears throat> he says, verse um, four, and I say this, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Although I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. 
Now, verse 6 and verse 7, I want to focus in on. Verse 6 says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. As you have therefore. All right, somebody, the, the, the uh, uh, scholar says therefore, the word therefore here uh, deals with what he is about to say next based on what he has just said. You with me? Therefore. And the author says he was talking about the supremacy and the sovereignty of Jesus Christ. All right, what he had to say about it. So let's go back a little further here, chapter 1. First of all, verse 12, before he talked about Christ, he talked about the Father. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. This is the Father. It was God's idea, right, for us to be saved. Who had delivered us, this is still the Father's doing, from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son is still the work of the father right now he turns talking about the son in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins redemption means a releasing effected by payment of ransom a releasing and the word forgiveness here means liberation obtained by payment of ransom. Liberation or deliverance obtained by a payment of ransom. You know what the payment is, right? The blood of Jesus Christ. But it's releasing, a, a releasing from sin. It's a releasing from guilt. It's a releasing from bondage by the blood that was shed. The payment was paid for you and I. So God wants us free. Somebody said free. free. That's why he wants us free because the price has been paid. All right. Now I'm going to slow it down a little bit here. I want to make sure I'm covered. So concerning the supremacy and sovereignty of Christ, he says, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, verse 15, Christ, who is the image of the invisible God, right? Direct image. The firstborn of every creature, for by him, note this, for by him, Christ, were all things created. Are you, are you hearing this? For by him, Jesus Christ, were all things created that are in heaven and that on earth, that are on earth, visible, that which we see, and invisible, that which we cannot see. Whether they be thrones of dominion or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Somebody say Christ. Christ. All right. I want, you, I, I want to focus in on the supremacy, the importance of understanding who Jesus is and the role that he plays in fulfilling our salvation from start to finish, all right? So now he says, verse 16 again, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, all right? Everybody get that? We were created for him. If a woman is created for the man, then the man should have the woman, right? And the woman's affection should be to the man, right? Are you hearing me? Okay. All things were created by him and 
for him. So where should our affection be? To him. All right. So God is a jealous God. He does not want our affection to be more for anything down here or anybody down here. Hello. Okay. So, created for us. I mean, for him. We were created for him. All right, now, can you see purpose? Can you see a sense of uh, identity? Who we are? What is our purpose? To glorify him. We're made for him. All right, let me go on. Verse 17, and he's before all things, and by him all things consist. That word here, consist, in the Greek means hold together. Everything is held together. And, and one scholar is saying, uh, you can see God's mind when he made gravity. Without gravity, you and I would become floating right up in space. We wouldn't have no stability. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All right. It shows the mind of the master. He's like gravity. He's like gravity. If you don't have Jesus as a Christian, you, 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 you may float away. <laughs> I, I, I'm painting the picture of Jesus because I feel like God was putting, quickening me, making me understand. Look, look at this. Look at it closely. All things come of God. Everything was made by him from the beginning. He started out, God, the virus says, God, they had a conference here and he said, let us make man in our image and our life. And the Bible says everything that was made was made by him. So that means he is the head of creation. But it didn't stop there. He is the head of the church. He's the head of the new creation. The moral creation. Are oh, you hear what I'm saying? By him all things hold together. It's by him. Is by him, saints. Verse 18, and he's the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminent, gain possession of it before anybody else. Wow. He's our Savior, and he's our Lord. We belong to him. He made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Hallelujah. So when we are grateful to him, we are moving in understanding. God, I am grateful. There's a slew of people that will never make it here. But if I look out here, every one of you that's been saved, you belong to Jesus. That means when that great and terrible day of God's wrath come, you will escape it. So what I said earlier is do not, let's not, that's talking to me too, let's not get caught up in the little things. Let's not let those little things become monsters and forget whose we are and what God has done for us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power there, that old spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience. But now at this time, hallelujah, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins and have raised us up together he's quickened us up and made us sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus somebody ought to praise your God hallelujah to the lamb hallelujah to the lamb glory to God hallelujah it is the work of your adversary to make you major on the minor and minor on the major. Somebody hear what I'm trying to say. Hallelujah. That's why he said rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Ain't nothing can stop you from praising the Lord when that understanding is right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, you got some stuff in you, some dynamite. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that dynamite works such that when you get hard pressed, he awakens in you. Hallelujah. He began to give you energy that you never knew. He gives you strength when you're weak. Hallelujah. He lifts up your head when it's bowed down. When your knees are weak, he strengthens your knees. When your mind is being perplexed, he put the cobwebs off of your mind. He that has made us for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. That's what you got to tell the devil. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And if God be for us, who can be against us? My God. Hallelujah. Paul said, Paul said I'm, I'm convinced, I'm persuaded that death, life, prince of palaces, power, things present, things to come, height, death, no any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Come on, let's give God some praise in this house. He is deserving of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody. They came to old man David in the Bible. And David had fallen short and he had sinned and God comes to him and says, there are three things. He said, choose one of those that I may do to you. David thought for a minute. One of them had to do with putting, leaving him in the hands of man. David thought, he said, well, I tell you what. You, 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 you do what you need to do with me. Don't, don't, don't put me in the hand of man. He said, because I know your mercies are very great. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I heard somebody says, if man puts you up there, he'll bring you down. Glory to God. But if God puts you up there, there's not a demon in hell can bring you down. Put your trust in the Lord. For they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abide forever. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I got some further good news. The Bible says, as the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people. God is for you. Hallelujah. He goes on and said, the angels of the Lord encamp round about them that fear him and deliver them. You got angels whether you see them or not. You got some angels on your side. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, give God some glory in this house. 
Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give our adversary a black eye. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can be grateful to God. Hallelujah. And then Paul goes on to talk about the need to know him better. You see, we got the more you know about Jesus, the more it calms your fears. Hallelujah. The Bible says here, let me see what it says here. Verse 28, Paul said, verse 27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. Woo! Glory to God, the hope of glory. Whom we preach, warning every man, teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. And then he says, for I would that you knew what great care I have for you and for them at Laodicea and for his ministers, not seeing my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted. God wants our heart not be troubled, but comforted. Hallelujah. Knit together in the substance that God gives, and that is love. And unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, of the, not the acknowledgement of the mystery of God. It is a mystery. Hallelujah because of what God has done. But Christ is the treasure. Tri Christ is the treasure that is in clay pots. Christ is that treasure that is in earthen vessels. Christ is that treasure, brothers and sisters. Christ makes us who we are. It is Christ working in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. It's not about what you can do. It's not about what we can do. It's not about who we are otherwise, but it's Christ, somebody say it, Christ in you, Christ in you. That makes you worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Christ in you. The hope of glory. There's a need to get to know him more. Paul said, as he was sharing, uh, it implied, in what Paul, the scholar said, in Paul's day, a disciple learned from their teacher as they walked and talked together. Often, it took the form of a dialogue. And he was saying, in order to be rooted in faith, we must walk with Jesus and in his steps. You see, God, Jesus talks about our being him, his disciples. And in and, 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 and St. John chapter 14, Jesus says, or 15, he said, I'm the true vine. And my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. Every branch that bears fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you're clean through the word which I've spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Who glory. Except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except you abide in me. I'm the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Look at somebody say, let's start abiding in him. Abiding in him more. Hallelujah. Fruit will come out of your life. problem with the church today if I can say it is they're not abiding in him they're in and out they got time for God and got time to fellowship and, and walk in union with the God of the of our salvation and so they're not bearing much fruit um, there's frustration on every hand people are saying what they want to say but when you abide in him yeah. hallelujah he bears the fruit Hallelujah, glory to God. Somebody said, I can't love. Oh, you need to abide in him. You need to abide in him. Let your roots grow deep in the soil of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And he shall be like a tree 
planted by the rivers of waters that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he do shall prosper. Hallelujah. Abide in him, somebody. Abide in him. Hallelujah. You're going to bring the fruit. Hallelujah. Of love and joy and peace and long suffering. Somebody say, I can't take it no more. God says, you can take it some more. Abide in me. Come to his presence. Come into his presence with singing. Come into his presence and fall on your knees. And fall on your knees and call on God. Ask God for strength. Ask God for grace. And God give you grace when you don't have grace. Hallelujah. 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 This is what God is calling the church to. Bearing fruit. Hallelujah. Fruit bearing. I lived on a farm years ago and the, ma the master had trees. And every time the trees, some trees got skimpy, wouldn't bear much fruit. Sometimes there was worm in this fruit. And, and he had to bring some, some things to prune that limb. Sometimes God has to prune areas in our lives that won't bear fruit. And, and it hurts sometimes. Um, but after it's all over, hallelujah, that tree began to bear more fruit. Um, it began to look good in the eyes of God. Um, God is working by his spirit, somebody. Don't give him up. Don't give out. Um, hang in there. God is faithful. God's going to help you. He's going to get you to the other side because has, he started it in you. And he's not going to leave you hanging. He's going to do it for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, give him some praise. It's all right. Give him the glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Do his name. Hallelujah. I want you to know that every devil in hell, when you set your mind to say, I'm going to be grateful, every devil in hell, none of them can stop you. But you got to set your heart to be thankful. Isn't that right? And look at somebody and say, don't play with it. Set your heart to be grateful. Hallelujah. When you do, God will bless you. Hallelujah. He's in the blessing business. He's in the blessing business. He didn't just start, hallelujah, thousands of years ago. Hallelujah. Glory to God. To him that works righteousness is accepted in him. He's not a respectable person. That's what the Bible says. Isn't that right? Hallelujah, he's a good God. Uh, somebody just lift your hands and give him praise. God, you're good. God, you're good. God, you're good. And I will ever praise you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's been too good to us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I just want to remind you, somebody, don't major on the minor. And don't minor on the major. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Am I talking to somebody here today? Hallelujah. God says be grateful. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Be grateful. Things are bad out there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. We need to be grateful to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He wants us to get to know him better. Hallelujah, so we won't be doubting him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But trusting, isn't that right? Trust in him, hallelujah, at all times. Isn't that right? Glory to God. Glory to God. I heard the Bible says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I'll give you rest I'll give you refreshing I'll give you relief hallelujah he said take my yoke upon you and learn about me for my yoke is easy and my burdens are light he said you'll find the rest for that weary soul hallelujah glory to God hallelujah to God 
get to know him a little better. And as you get to know him a little better, your roots are going deeper. Hallelujah, you're going to be built up in God. And as you're built up in him, then the Bible declares that we'll begin to overflow with thanksgiving and gratitude. Hallelujah. Grateful unto him and bless his name, somebody. God is good. I want you to join me. If you'll stand up and join me now to give God some praise. Don't give, don't give man praise, but give God some praise. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. For he'll receive your praise. He'll receive your praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. That problem, that problem that seems so big, that problem that seems so big, lift your hands and give God some praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He'll work it out. He knows what to do. Glory to God. I need somebody to help me praise this God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. God has been gracious. Hallelujah, he's been too good. Hallelujah for us not to give him thanks. Hallelujah to God. Thank him with a glad heart. Thank him with a glad heart, somebody. Glory to God. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Give him the praise. Give him the glory that's to his name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's been our shepherd and our God. Hallelujah. Let the Lord build us so that we'll overflow with gratitude. This problem will become very small. Hallelujah. When we let our roots grow deep in the soil of God's love, God loves us with an everlasting love. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Somebody would lift your hands to God and worship him. Worship him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Oh, bless you, Lord, bless you, Lord, bless you, Lord. You've been so good. You've been so good, Lord. You've been our shelter, hallelujah. In the stormy time, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. We know, Lord God, that you'll do what you say. You can be trusted. You're reliable. You're faithful in all of your ways. So we lift our hands and give thanks to God, our Savior. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. As you lift your hands, let the hand of God flow. Let the life of God flow to you today. Hallelujah. He's, he's good. He will pardon. He will pardon us. Maybe someone haven't been grateful to God. Maybe you found yourself complaining a lot. You just, as situation increased, you, your anger increased. But I want you to know that Jesus, not only does he understand, but he want to change things for us from the inside out. Hallelujah, Jesus. And once he changes us from the inside, everything else around us will begin to change. He's a great God. He's a great Savior. I don't know about you, but if there's anyone here, you feel, oh, Lord, that word was really for me today found myself through the word that I wasn't really that grateful. I complained because God didn't work that out for me. I complained because I prayed for a while and he hadn't answered that particular concern. And it started to get the best of me. I want you to just join me here at the altar. No shame in your game. Let Jesus